On Monday morning in Council Bluffs, AIM Institute hosted an hour of code at Woodrow Wilson Middle School. I'm your Southwest Iowa neighborhood reporter, Katrina Markle, and an hour of code is designed to spark creativity and help kids learn about future tech careers. Challenge your skills here, guys. Push yourself. The seventh graders in Ethan Bando's science class look like they're playing games, and in a way they are. But the activities on their laptops are actually computer coding exercises. Set obstacle two. It's a global program, and this year the kids participated in pop culture themed activities such as Minecraft, Star Wars, and Marvel. Eighth grader Randy Wirtz has participated before. I like that I could like do all sorts of different codes and learn how they work and everything like that. I played a dinosaur game and I learned how to make it jump and walk and collect coins. It gives me lots of ideas that I could do whatever I want when I'm older and that you can just follow your dreams. Randy credits her science teachers with encouraging her interest in computer programming and technology. The AIM Institute partners with several schools in the Omaha Council Bluffs area. At Woodrow Wilson Middle School in Council Bluffs, I'm your Southwest Iowa neighborhood reporter, Katrina Markle. A new COVID variant joins the flu and RSV as reasons to be cautious this holiday season. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a new COVID variant, JN.1, was first detected in the U.S. in September. Currently, it's the fastest growing variant in the country and makes up an estimated 15 to 29 percent of cases, according to the CDC. Doctors said symptoms of JN.1 depend on a person's immunity and overall health, but in general, symptoms tend to be similar across all COVID variants. Looking at COVID hospitalizations over the past week, the majority of the country is in the green, which is where we want to be. But the CDC said areas with a higher number of patients hospitalized for COVID, along with other viruses like the flu and RSV, could mean another strain on our nation's hospital systems in the near future. But similar to what we saw this time last year, the agency said the flu is landing more people in the ER than COVID across most age groups. Experts say the latest COVID vaccine is our best line of defense at protecting against the worst symptoms of the JN.1 variant. Here's Dr. William Schaffner on when you should get the vaccine to ensure you're best protected over the holidays. It does take seven days to 10 days to two weeks for your body's immune system to protect you optimally after the vaccination. So get the vaccine this afternoon. And here's a look at the latest COVID vaccine guidance. Those aged 12 and older who are unvaccinated are advised to get two doses of the Novavax vaccine versus a previously vaccinated person who needs just one dose of the Pfizer, Moderna or Novavax. And doctors also advise the new variant is highly transmissible and contagious, so make sure you take those proper uh, precautions. Stay home if you're feeling sick, wash your hands, and definitely make sure to mask up if you're in one of those vulnerable populations. Mara Seriani, Scripps News. Leaving your home for a holiday trip can be stressful with nobody around for days on end, but there are ways to scare off burglars even if you are hundreds of miles away. Just look at these faces. You can see how much children appreciate receiving holiday gifts, in this case at a community toy drive. I love to see their smiles. It's the smiles that make my day. So imagine if a Grinch got into your home and cleared out some of those toys. We recommend everybody do a uh, walk around their house to check for open windows, unlocked doors. Sergeant Tim Schmidt Gosling says even the most amateur burglars, like the knuckleheads in Home Alone, <laughs> will have no problem getting in if something is left open. Perfect example, we found one unlocked. But even locked doors won't necessarily keep the thieves out. Thieves and burglars know that people are more likely to be traveling during the holidays. Nick Wolney is a senior editor for CNET. He says now is the time to be on guard. Really dot your I's and cross your T's regarding home security to make sure that you don't come home to a disaster. After your doors and windows are locked, check your tech. Make sure that it's running. Make sure that it can really be beneficial for you. That means ensuring that your security camera or video doorbell are fully charged and sending footage to your phone. 
Step three. Be thinking about uh, you know, your own community. Ask your neighbors to keep an eye on your home. But keep in mind, most burglaries are at night, so it's not a bad idea to put in another line of defense. Motion detecting lights, things like that, that can be a really great deterrent. There are a lot of affordable options available online. Finally, just in case someone does break in, make sure it's not worth their while. Before you head out, maybe just taking some extra time to lock things up. Uh, if you have a safe, putting those other valuables into that safe. That way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. A scam that plays on your emotions. Pet owners are being tricked into sending hundreds, even thousands of dollars on a puppy that's never delivered. We had rain over the weekend and we have more chances for rain as we get into Christmas weekend. Coming up in my Super 7 Day Forecast, we'll track out a wetter than average pattern for Christmas weekend. We get sucked in by the cute photos and the promise of welcoming a new pet into our homes that it can be hard to spot the signs of a puppy scam. Tina Copen and her dog Maya shared a special relationship. I suffer from extreme anxiety and I, it, it can get so bad that it throws me into seizures. And my last Yorkie would know, she would sense when I had, was going to have one and she would back me up to a chair. Maya passed away at 15 years old. While grieving, Tina thought a new puppy would help her heal and came across a breeder online. They wanted me to get a gift card and I told them I'd have to make two payments because I didn't have it all at once. She sent $500, then she got another call. Well, I needed to send another 250 to the airport. So I ended up calling the airport and they said, they told me they didn't uh, ship live animals. Angie Barnett with the Better Business Bureau of Greater Maryland said this is the second scam. And think about it, during the holidays when we, you know, have this visual image of an animal in a crate on a, you know, an airplane tarp and it's cold. That's what comes to mind. So the emotion, sense of urgency, needing to act now, and individuals will uh, turn around and give more money to the scammer. So they hit us twice. And they try to take it a step further. Now it's health issues. So that compounds it, that your um, pet can't leave one state to the other because a health issue, a veterinarian needs to come in immediately. And potential owners comply after developing a bond from the photos that are usually stolen from other websites. He kept contacting me, telling me that the poor puppy is sitting there with no food or anything at the airport playing on my sympathy. Tina never got her money back, but she did adopt two puppies from her area, and that's the best way to avoid these scams. Go to your local shelter or find a reputable breeder through the American Kennel Club. With your 12 Scams of Christmas, I'm Mallory Safaste. Today was a pretty cold day, but when we look at the Almanac numbers and compare where our high temperature was today, which was 36 degrees, that's as warm as it was this afternoon. It's actually pretty average now for this time of the year to only get this warm outside. Now, as we get into the middle to late part of this week, milder air will be returning back to the region for Omaha, and it looks like we have a warm front just out to our west. So that's what's going to happen. Things are going to start to warm up tomorrow. We're back into the upper 40s, about 10 degrees warmer than it was today. On Wednesday, up near 50 degrees. We're basically in the 50s for temperatures from Thursday through Christmas Day, even into next week. There's Christmas right there. And you do see a little bit of a cool down by Christmas Day, but we'll see.